Canyon. Uh, we start here, and these guys are like kind of lumbering. These jets swooshing over like this. We're calling it the Unreal Miniature Conversion. We've started to test this technique. Okay, and action. And here at Fonco, we were able to construct some miniatures, scan them and put them into the computer, rig them so they can be animated digitally, and then place them into environments. So when you're looking at this effect shot, this first experimental effect shot for the film, everything is real, but it's been manipulated and brought together digitally. I think that the technique we're developing for Gods of Mars is a really happy medium between uh, practical and computer graphics. We have two main assets that we're creating in miniature to uh, employ into the Unreal production pipeline. We created the spaceship first as a miniature, did the whole paint job on it, did a 3D laser scan, and then brought into the Unreal Engine. So when you put side by side the computer graphics model and the physical model, they actually don't look different at all. The robot, which is uh, the six foot model robot behind me, it's got an, an incredible paint job, lots of texture, really rich in detail. We tried to give both models a very lived in weathered look. Like these are things that are actually in service, have been in service for a long time, and didn't just roll off the production floor. My original conception of the movie was that it would take place a lot of it underground, so it would be fairly low budget, and it could be done with sets. You'd only see Mars maybe and a few shots exterior. Then the vision came that we should have a terraform Mars, in other words, change the oxygen level so that you're almost breathable, have plants there. So basically you could live there with little apparatus. You wouldn't have space suits on, for instance. We basically scouted a location of the Grand Canyon. I work with a few different satellite uh, data websites. Uh, it's basically LIDAR scans of Earth. The LIDAR scan maps are, are really nice resolution, but they do lose some details in it. What I can do is start to bring back those details. I can start to add erosion, uh, terracing, uh, plateauing, and I can add these filters on top of the terrain to really make it hyper-realistic. The way that we're approaching this is so fast, we can make changes on the fly in real time and see that updated in a matter of seconds and something that would have taken me a month to get a shot going, we can do in a weekend. Great, let's cut and reset. As a visual effects supervisor and as a cinematographer, it's a wonderful opportunity to explore doing things that we never thought of doing with the tools before. And you get to explore the technique and then sometimes magic happens. Can I see this for a second? Yeah. So I just realized something that if we truck over, I'm wondering if I could get into the volume here. I've known about the Unreal Engine as a game engine. About 15 years ago, I played this game called Unreal Tournament. And I spent hundreds of hours playing this video game. It's a first person shooter game. It's fun. And um, I never thought it, would, it was going to eventually become a cinematic tool this new technology of scanning real life things and putting them into the Unreal Engine is really new. It's like this year. And it just sort of hit me like a ton of bricks. Why don't we scan miniatures and then put them into the Unreal Engine? Theoretically, it should look real because it is real. It's good, it looks really good. When I came up with this idea, I thought, well, it must have been done before. And it's never been done before. There's really only a handful of people who can make miniatures nowadays. People have abandoned that art form because CGI seems to be the better option. But even Industrial Light and Magic, they don't even have a miniature department anymore. So I told Fawn about this. So I said, well, why don't we try this? And he got really excited. <laughs> and this is one of those opportunities to 
invent, reinvent, or innovate um, storytelling while you're making a movie instead of some kind of petri dish in a scientific lab. <laughs> this is actually making a movie in a totally another way.